Oh, hi, everybody. It's Steve Jagger, co-founder of Addy. I've got David Atwell here today, who is the co-founder at Honeytree. He's going to give us a little bit of an update on what's going on with the three hotels that have come onto the platform. We'll chat a little bit about the hotel world. So, David, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Stephen, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And it was great to see you in Toronto at the Keyspire event. It was awesome to see that Addy booth front and center at such a great event. That was good. We had a really good, uh, we had a good slot for the, uh, for the booth. Like, yeah, I, I was center. very happy to see that. Yeah, it was great. That was a fun event. It was, uh, it was good. It was good to see Shaq. It was uh, <laughs> all, all in all a good, good event. Good stuff. Yeah, so let's dive into it. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Um, I think more, most importantly, let's dive into Quebec City. Uh, Quebec City is doing so well. This has become one of my favorite real estate markets, specifically for hospitality. Uh, for those who have spent time in Quebec City, it's like an incredible place to visit. The tourism is incredible. And the real estate is just one in a million. Like It's incredible, the properties you have there. Sure enough, the 212 Rue Saint-Jean, Chateau des Tourelles, has done extremely well. So we've owned it for a little over two years now. This property, we've operated basically turnkey. Uh, we've plugged in our digital concierge and self-check-in, but we haven't done any renovations at all. We haven't uh, painted, redecorated, added any units. The property was recently appraised for $3.6 Now, just wow. to refresh everyone's memory, we only bought it for $2,050,000. And our total all-in uh, acquisitions about two and a half million. So we've created, let's say, at least a million dollars of new equity in two years just from automating the check-in on a hotel. Now, right. so this is this is breaking news, right? Nobody's you haven't announced this yet. This new appraisal. That's right. Yes, this is this is breaking news. Breaking and, news and <laughs> live and in in front of the audience here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm quite happy about this. Uh, and in hindsight, I mean, the strategies that we used with uh, 874 Sherbrooke in 2048, I would have simply just done the exact same thing. It, it, like I said in the past, it's really just about the automation. That really is adding so much value to the NOI, the net operating income, when you can remove the cost of operation so significantly through technology and automation, that's that's a grand slam. So... For for this one, this is the Quebec City. You have nine hundred and forty investors in that one. The mm -hmm. for the people that don't know, like what is this hotel automation? Like what you can open the front door and you can get into your like. What can you do with this? How does it work? So so basically, it's the exact same as any way you check into a normal hotel, except that entire process is done automatically. So there's no more sit, meeting someone at a desk, exchanging your credit card, your driver's license, your contact information, swapping keys, none of that. It's all automatic. So you can make your booking online through either Airbnb, Expedia, booking.com, or through our direct channel, anerohotels.com. And you're provided with all the information to create your own experience. And, and to be honest, just getting the person through the door is creating the most value. And so it, it's quite a simple process. Now, there are other layers that we're building in and adding on top, like the, the customer service, the, the sales, the upselling through the application. But just getting people through the door by themselves saves so much money and creates so much value. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great news. And I'm sorry, how big is the Quebec City Hotel? How many rooms? This one's only 12. So there's 12 two rooms. very exciting things that are in the pipeline right now. So our good friend, uh, Sebastian from Monero Hotels, he's our operator. He's been lobbying with Ville Quebec for permission to add extra units to this property. Now, Quebec, the province and both the city are very strict with any sort of municipal bylaws or any real estate zoning. And so getting permission to add these units, if we get the approval, will be a significant accomplishment. Uh, they did have a committee of adjustment meeting, and uh, this was on the agenda, and it's speculated it's going to be approved. And so what that means is we'll be adding five units within the existing space of the hotel. So this cool. is the, the front lobby, and like there's a dining area, and there's a couple rooms that are large that will divide in half. That's going to add a substantial amount of value to the property. That's sweet. So if you're I, – I haven't been to this hotel. I've been to the other two. If you're checking in on your phone, you're opening up the front door, you're saying the lobby is still there. It's just there's no humans working in it. So what is it right now? Just a, a couches and stuff? Or what, what do you have yeah. in the lobby? 
That's right. So there still is the old front desk, uh, but it's not being used. There's a couple couches and chairs, but then they used to have like a dining area um, with a bunch of tables. It looks like a little cafe. And the dining area space specifically is enough room to add two units right there. Oh, wow. So this cool. is like, that's one of the great value adds of, of automating a hotel. You can now take that space that was needed for human interaction and convert that into additional revenue. Yeah. Right. So I'm thrilled about this. Now, the, the second exciting piece of news is we have been, um, we have a commitment letter for bank refinancing uh, with BDC, Business Development Canada. And that's a relationship I'm extremely excited about. Uh, BDC uh, funds and supports small businesses and uh, like unbranded hotels, uh, like at 212 Rue Saint-Jean, but they are excited to finance all of our deals. And so they, we've spent about six months in underwriting, working with them directly. And now that we have this one approval, they're ready to do one after another, after another. So this mortgage that we're looking at um, get closing on, it could be in any week now, it's 2.2 million. It'll be approximately a 20 year amortization and there, the interest rate is going to be about six and a half percent. Now it's a peri pass sue mortgage, which means it's blended with two lenders. So Royal bank and BDC, they're sharing it. And, and so Royal banks only doing 18 year amortization at a 6% interest rate. BDC is going to be about 22 with a slightly higher rate, but it blends out to be about six and a half and a 20 year amort. And so what that um, means is we're looking at a fairly significant equity takeout and our interest rates going down incredibly. And we're actually going to be amortizing the mortgage now. So this is a very exciting uh, update. Cool. Um, so, and so I don't know what the, I don't remember what the, the mortgage on it that's on it right now. What, what is it's it? It's about it... one. So we have a first mortgage of 1.25 and then we had a VTB that we swapped out with a private second of about 350. So we're at about 1.6 million. And now our new mortgage is going to be 2.2. So that's a $600,000 equity takeout. Now with that capital, we have a few options. One, we have an equity partner outside of Addy that helped us acquire on the deal who we're working towards buying out. But secondly, when we have approval to add these units, this 600,000 can be used to finance those additions as well. So now we're going to be at the point where we're deciding, do we allocate that, that cash to buy out the equity partner? And that means now there's only $500,000 of Addy equity that owns this entire property. Or do we hold on to it for a bit for renovations? We're still contemplating that. Or perhaps we do another raise. We keep the cash here for the renovations, but do another raise to buy out that next partner. Because adding these five units is going to create a lot of value in the property. Cool. So the Addy investors in this property, I guess, will find out more details um, in the coming I don't know, days or weeks. Yeah, as, as soon as we as close on the refinance, then yeah, as soon as we close on that refinance and we're we're in with BDC and and we uh, have an amortized mortgage, now we can decide what we want to do with that cash. Are we buying up partners? Or are we using it to reallocate to add the units? That's to cool. be determined. Okay, so that's Quebec City. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah, um, next one is eight seven four Sherbrooke. Yep. Um, again, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. This is the one that's it's doing a dividend today, right? This is the, yeah, that's correct. Okay. So Addy correct. members uh, will be getting the dividend uh, shortly. That'll show up in their wallets. This property has 767 um, investors in it. Can you give us kind of, the, again, the, the, the overview of what's going on with 874 Sherbrooke? This is Montreal. This is not Quebec City. This is Montreal. Yeah. So when we launched 874 Sherbrooke, we had a decision to make. Do we continue to work with our Montreal operations or do we consolidate with our Quebec City team? We decided for many reasons to, to lease the property to our Quebec City partner and, and bring them into, into Montreal. Now, it's two different products. When you're in Quebec City, it's more of a hotel. You can, even though it's self-check-in, the marketplace there, the guests are coming from Expedia, they're coming from booking, and they're showing up in a more traditional hotel environment. Whereas Montreal is more of an Airbnb town. And when you show up, you're, you're already expecting to check yourself in. One thing that we're improving on is we're now solely putting 874 Sherbrooke on Airbnb. So when we brought a narrow over to Montreal, they, we were using Airbnb, Booking.com, and Expedia. 
And that becomes a bit of an operational challenge because now you have communication coming in from three different channels. We still have our boots on the ground team in Montreal who are used to the, Air, the Airbnb ecosystem. And so our sales didn't do as well as we had wanted them to as a result. So what that means is now we're pivoting. Everything's just going straight on to, uh, to Airbnb and uh, we're el they're eliminating booking.com and Expedia altogether. Oh, okay. Wow. And so that's like the, you expect that to drive more volume or higher dollar per night or both? Yeah. So, so the idea is when you work with Airbnb, the algorithm knows that you're giving them all of their, all of your business. So if, if your calendar is filled up with Airbnb, they're going, Airbnb is going to reward you and bump you up in their algorithm. Okay. But if you have booking and Expedia and they see you're, they're only getting a third of potential business, they give you less exposure. So instead of using different channels to give yourself more exposure, that's not actually what happens. When you just choose one and stick with it, you get promoted. And in fact, that's what happened with our first hotel acquisition, which was not on Addy 2024 St. Denis. Uh, it did extremely well solely on Airbnb. And we actually switched over to using other channels and we saw a reduction in sales. So as a result, everything's going over to Airbnb. Gotcha. Okay. And so that one's operating well. Yep. Are... It's operating. It's creating dividends. Yep. Uh, there's still a couple little things that we want to improve, uh, specifically the curb appeal. I mean, these all these are things that all just happen as the listings mature and the business mature. Uh, you're, you're reading the reviews, you're finding out what guests had to say about it, and you're tweaking and improving the business. Gotcha. And then the third one that was on the platform was St. Denis, also Montreal. What's the what's the update on that one? Just to give everybody, I'm just looking it up here. That one has 1,470 uh, Addy investors in it. That's the biggest one, I guess, 1,470. Cool. Yeah. This one I'm actually, I'm quite excited about, despite the fact that we had a drawback and we are not, we're no longer permitted to operate as a hotel. What that's doing is it's proving the model of, of downside protection. So when we bought the property, it had been operating for a hotel for many, many years. And then when we went to switch over the licensing and the city of Montreal drilled down through the title, it, it turns out it was never actually supposed to be operating as a hotel 20 years ago. And which has led to a title insurance claim because and what that will do is title insurance will reimburse any loss in value for anything that comes up in your title that changes your your operation. So we bought it as a hotel. It was operating as a hotel. It'll be worth X dollars. But now that it's going down to multifamily, there's a reduction in value. Title insurance compensates that and reimburses it. And how that works is they look at the day of closing. What was the value of the property as a hotel versus what was the value of the property as what it's actually permitted to operate as. Now, at the same time, it is a great business model to convert old hotels into residential housing. There's, there's all kinds of people that are doing that in different municipalities. The thing is, when you have such a prime piece of real estate, like downtown Montreal, like you definitely want that to be a hotel. And so that's a, it's, pretty, it's pretty disappointing, to be honest. But at the same time, uh, we recently had the property appraised as complete as as residential, and it's coming in at five point nine million, uh, which is only two hundred thousand dollars less than what it was originally appraised as a hotel. And on top of that, we can exit finance with CMHC up to fifty years using the MLI Select program. So it's a bit of a trade off, right? You're getting better financing, lower cap rate, less cash flow, but at the end of the day, the deal still works. Right. And so how's that one operating now? Is it, do you have regular apartment tenants in there? So the issue that arose is we had been working with the city and title insurance for about a year and a half to get permission to operate as a hotel. And basically the deal that we made with title insurance was that if we can get our license, we're not going to seek title insurance claims. So we had to stop everything for about a year and a half in order to know what we were actually building. You know, if we're going to build a hotel, we're going to design it one way. If we're if we're building residential, we're going to design it another. And unfortunately, it's it sat empty for about a year and a half waiting for this. Now, at the same time, we were also pouring all of our energy over to Sherbrooke to get that finished. And so right now we're at the finish line to get uh, to get the units finished and leased up and then exited out to CMHC. 
And then when you exit it out, does that mean exit the investor group out or sell the whole thing or what do you so the, exit it out? So exit out, uh, stabilize the financing and stabilize yeah. the operation. I can't yet speculate on what the loan amount will be and, right. and what that will mean for the, for the investors. Uh, but it, because it's impossible to know what the underwriting will land at specifically with bond rate volatility over the past year and a half. Now they are bond rates are trending downward and then they shot back up again recently, but it looks like they're going to come back down. It's really hard to say where that loan amount will land. But of course, you know, we want to stabilize and get our investors out, get everyone paid and get them happy. Now, worst case, we have to wait for the entitled insurance payout, but uh, that's something that could supposedly be quite quick as well. Gotcha. Okay. So um, that's, a, I think, good update. I think people will be happy to hear what's going on with the the three hotels. I'm I'm obviously in all three of them. Um, <laughs> so what's, maybe can you talk a bit about like what's next? Like what's Honey Tree working on? What's going on in the hotel space? Are you doing more in Quebec? Are you doing more Ontario? What's yeah, what, definitely. What are you guys up to? Where are you going? So the nice thing about hospitality is the more doors that you add, the the better economies of scale that you have, and the more profitable it is for your operation. And so we're at a working with a narrow. That's one of the reasons why we're consolidating everything with a narrow, because it reduces their cost of operation across the portfolio. So our goal is to add more and more. In fact, there are about four or five fantastic hotels for sale in Montreal and Quebec City that we're dying to get our hands on. The problem is raising capital has been quite difficult. Now, I'm quite hopeful that with when people see the performance of 2 and 2 Rue Saint-Jean, they're going to see how powerful the strategy is. And like this is a great deal that people should be investing in. So right now, we have about four or five fantastic hotel deals that we're looking to scoop up. Cool. Um, oh, that's over the next few months or that's like a 2025 thing? That's like right now. <laughs> so there's one on our street that right down the street from 2048 that we're looking to buy. And then there's actually one, uh, I can't say too much because it's not quite public yet, but um, let's just say it's going to be a fire sale. And, uh, and then there's two others in Quebec City. Now, one is a luxury boutique within the walls of Quebec. And that is like a once in a lifetime hotel. Um, it, like when you picture Quebec city hospitality, this, this hotel is exactly what's in your mind. Uh, beautiful three thirty-three 33 unit hotel in a half million dollars. Uh, it'll trade at about a nine cap and finance at about 65% loan to value, which means it'll be about 8% cash on cash return just from the operation. So that, that's another thing I love about hotel deals is the cash flow it generates, you know, multifamily has been so reliable and so consistent over the past many years. But in the past two or three years, we've seen the volatility that can happen. And people have learned the hard way, like you really need cash flow. You can't live off appreciation. There has to be cash flow in the portfolio. And that's one of the reasons why you buy hotels. And I've said it in the past. That's how you win Monopoly. You buy the hotels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's definitely on our radar as well. Uh, now, but we are seeing the pendulum starting to swing back and multifamily is becoming quite interesting again. As soon as you see that gap between cap rates and interest rates, you know, it's usually um, interest rate plus two should be your cap rate at least. Uh, but now in multifamily in, in Southern Ontario, I mean, cap rates are upwards of 5%. And with the, today, the Canadian mortgage bond five year was at 319 with a 1% spread, I mean, you're at about a 1% spread on your on your interest rate and cap rate. So we are seeing the pendulum swinging back into multifamily, great value and great deals happening. And with CMHC's MLI Select program, I mean, you can get fantastic financing up to 95% loan to value, 50-year AMORT. I mean, it's not a great strategy to leverage an asset that high and take 50 years to pay it off. But at the same time, if it's a good appreciating secondary market, even just with regular rental increases, you, you will be getting that good cash flow over from five year five to year 10. And so we actually just acquired a great multifamily building in Brantford, Ontario uh, earlier in July. And so now we're starting to look back at multifamily as well. Nice. Does um, Ontario and BC have uh, rent controls? Does yeah. Quebec? Yeah. I don't know. It Quebec's does. very similar to Ontario. Now I don't, actually own any residential real estate in Quebec. It's all hospitality or commercial. 
So well, I have, except for Saint Denis, right? Well, that yeah, that's right. It will be. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not yet. Not operating, yet. But yeah, it's it's very similar to Ontario. Okay. Okay. Um, got it. And so the 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 strategy or the plan for you guys is to snap up some more of these smaller, what twenty to fifty unit hotels in yep. Quebec City and Montreal. Yeah. As well as you're you're dabbling in multifamily in Ontario. Yeah, we've been multifamily investors. I like I started buying residential since 2011. And so that was our bread and butter. It was hotels was just like something, okay, like this makes more sense than what we were getting. So um so we're we're already established multifamily investors. Uh but yeah, if there's a good deal, like I'm definitely gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. I just love um, hotels. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been talking about it for a while, and we haven't uh, yet done it. But I, I really want to do a like an Addy takeover of one of your hotels, where a bunch of members we pick a weekend, and you have to be an Addy member to to book your room, and we fill one of them with uh, with a bunch of members. I think that'd be a fun fun thing to do, and then build a bit of an event um, around it. I'm dying to figure out a way to do it. I have to admit, marketing and stuff like that isn't my wheelhouse. <laughs> I'm very much like a numbers operations guy. So if there's something we can work together on and figure out, maybe there's a cool branding promotion that we can do. I don't know. I know we can definitely collaborate and get Addy members visiting their own real estate. I know that's very powerful. I don't know if I'm the guy to execute it, but I have the real <laughs> estate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we can help i think we can help with that we'll figure out a date or something that works we'll pick a not a winter time in montreal or quebec but maybe a summer yeah uh, and uh and you know just put it out there to the to the community and say hey there's 20 rooms some of the addy team will be staying there and we'll yeah. we can build a few like learning events around it do a meetup down the street um you know one of the pubs or whatever that's nearby and then uh yeah, make a make a bit of a weekend out of it for a, for a trip. When we came out, remember we came out. Gosh, what was that? More than a year ago. I can't yeah, remember. It was like we brought January Griffin with us. We brought Zach Hartley with us. Yeah, um, and we did the tour around Montreal and and looked at both Sherbrooke and Saint Denis. That was um, a great time. That was fun. Yeah, so maybe we'll do something like that, but also include more of the community. Yeah, and, and definitely in Quebec City. And I would love to use uh, Chateau des Tourelles, 212 Rue Saint-Jean, as a case study just to show how powerful this business model is. You know, it's interesting. We had three hotel deals on the platform, and it was kind of like it turned out to be model one, model two, model three. Full-blown renovation, residential conversion, turnkey ad technology, which one does the best? Well, we now know turnkey just add the technology does the best. And like, this is a great thing for people to be investing in this fast value add and quick cash flow. If we structure the deal that way, I mean, if we want to acquire more hotels and, and make this a cool thing, let's put our heads together and figure out how to make this work. Cause there is definitely money to be made very quickly in a very unique way. Got it. And for anybody watching this in the future, if there is another uh, hotel operation coming on the platform. None of this is investment advice. <laughs> you have to make your own decisions at the time when the offering does come uh, come up. You know, I'm happy you said that. I encourage everybody to spend time with Keyspire and learn how to underwrite their own deals. That's actually how I got into commercial real estate was through Keyspire. And I learned so much through their courses and their programs. And like, you really need to know how to analyze a deal. It's so easy for an issuer to just slightly tweak numbers to make a deal work. But when you drill down and look at it, you have to decide if those numbers are feasible and if that operation is feasible. So I highly recommend everybody to join Keyspire as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for doing this. We will, uh, we will get it up and live on the, uh, on the platform so people can check it out and get the update of the three hotels. But yeah, I really appreciate you taking a moment to chat with us and, to give us the overview of where things are at. Thank you so much, Stephen. No problem. Thank you. Talk to you soon.